Okay, it's almost Pesach. And we know that on Pesach we have the four questions. We ask about the matzah and the maror and the dipping and the leaning. And I want to suggest that there is a fifth question that we should ask. And it's not about the particular details of the night. It's actually more of a meta question. It's about how we look at the world. Are we a pessimist or are we an optimist? And the truth is, is actually this is kind of one of the questions that we're going to get asked one day, we should be 120 years old. The Gemara tells us when we get up to the base in Shalmala, we ask, get asked a series of questions. One of them is, were you honest in business? One of them is, were you Kovei Itim La Torah? Did you set aside time to learn Torah? And one of the questions is, Tzipita Ligi'ula. Were you waiting for, expecting, and hopeful that redemption was going to come? And ultimately, this is a question of, are you a pessimist or are you an optimist? How do you see the world? Do you look at it through this lens that things are the way they are and they're terrible and awful and life just sucks? <laughs> or are you able to hold space for a little bit of hope where you can see things realistically, that things might be difficult, that things might be painful, but that there is a possibility for change and that Hashem is going to help? Golda Meir once said that pessimism is a luxury that a Jew cannot allow oneself. And if you think about it, that's really very important and so much to do with what we're all doing here. If your parents were pessimists, if your grandparents were pessimists, if your great-grandparents were pessimists, what are the chances that you would be sitting in the year 2022 in Toronto, Canada, in a modern Orthodox Zionist school learning about Pesach? If we weren't optimists, if we didn't come from optimists, there's no chance you would be sitting here. Because what other group of people have been, for the last 2,000 years, saying, next year in Jerusalem, give it another year, it's going to come. Don't worry, next year, next month, next week, five more minutes, we're going to get there. We are ultimately optimists. What's the, the national anthem, what's it called? Hatikva, which literally means the hope. And we say there, we haven't lost our hope yet. Ultimately, to be a Jew is to be an optimist. So the question is, where does this mandate for optimism come from? And I'd like to suggest that it comes from the first of the Yasser Sedebros, from the first of the Ten Commandments, which says, Ani Hashem asher sicha me'eretz avadim, that I am Hashem, the Lord your God, who took you out of Egypt and saved you from the house of bondage and slavery. And here Hashem is coming and identifying himself to the Jewish people and saying, believe in me, follow in my ways. Why? Because I freed you from slavery in Egypt. Now the truth is when you think about like all the cool things that God has ever done in his history of being God, um, what is like the coolest thing that he did? Was it Yitzhak Mitzrayim? I mean, it was pretty cool. I'm not gonna argue with that. But then again, like, you know, Abraham Lincoln also freed the slaves and I'm not trying to minimize that, but that's something a human being could do. So the fact that God did it, Still cool, like we're very grateful. But is it the coolest thing that he's ever done? Ultimately, the coolest thing that God has ever done was creating the world. That's unbelievable. Nobody else has ever been able to do something like that. So why did he not go to the Jewish people and say, hey guys, believe in me, follow me, do my needs vote because I created the world? And there are two reasons. One of them is because nobody was there. We don't know. So Hashem could show up and be like, hi guys, I'm the one who created the world, you should believe in me. And we could be like, uh-huh, who said? Because like, I wasn't there. I don't know. Nobody has any first-hand accounts of it. So to go back to something to say where like, we have no connection to it, believe in me because of something you have no connection to, Hashem wouldn't do that. And you'd see, that's right, we did. We all had a connection to it. The people who experienced it, Hashem could say to them, believe in me because you just saw the blood and the frogs and the lice and the, the splitting of the sea. You were there. That was me. So to ask us to believe in him because of that was logical, it made sense. But another reason is so that we should understand that when God created the world, it wasn't like set it and forget it, where he put the world together, he spun it on his, on his axis and was like, okay, everybody figure it out on your own, have a nice day. He is intimately involved with everything that happens in this world. So when we might be in a position where we think to ourselves like, does Hashem hear me when I dab in? Does he care when I cry? Do I matter to him at all? Pesach comes to tell us, yeah, you matter to him. He cares about you. We know that we read it in the Haggadah that the Jewish people cried out to Hashem and it tells us that he heard them and he went and he saved them. He took them out. We can look at life as a random conglomerate of a bunch of coincidences that have nothing to do with each other and have absolutely no meaning. Or we could understand that life 
the world, all of human history, is a beautiful puzzle, and each and every piece has major significance to it. The concept of the Seder coming up on Pesach, it's not just that there's this one night where everything is in order and there are all these 15 steps and like we wash our hands and we make the Kiddush and then, oh my God, when is dinner? It's not just about that. It's about the fact that life, the world, everything has an order to it. That Hashem is there behind all of it and that we need to try to be hopeful that He's there with us in everything. Coincidence is really just God's way of staying anonymous. Now Shakespeare once said, that all the world's a stage. And yeah, it is. We just believe that there's a director to it. So on this era of Pesach, I wish everybody the optimism that is supposed to come out of it, the deep belief that with your efforts and Hashem's help, today can be better than yesterday was, and tomorrow can be better than today. Chag Hashem